Happy Resurrection Sunday. So good to be with you, enjoying the sun, amen. No snow today, we're all good, right? I'm going to have my help come on up here. We'll, we'll have you come on up, we'll get ready, we'll open up with a word of prayer. Amen. Don't you love all of my help up here? So I know that you don't see Tammy right now. There's a reason for that. Of course, uh, Eden Joy came home this morning about what, 6.30? 6.30, 7 o'clock, so... So you see Josh up here. So we're, we're doing a little trade. So we're trading my wife for Josh this morning, and uh, which affords us the opportunity or the blessing to be able to have them here for worship. And besides that, I couldn't say no to my wife. It wouldn't have done any good, right? So she is over there with Victoria taking care of them both. And uh, God is so good. God is so good. God's going to continue to show his goodness even today and, and just ongoing. Amen. Let's go ahead and lift our hands before the Lord. Father, we love you. And Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for Resurrection Sunday. That Father, that we get to come. We get to come and celebrate. We get to come and partake. Father, of your goodness, Lord God. Father, without Resurrection Sunday, Father, we could not experience the goodness of God. And so, Father, we thank you for resurrection power, resurrection life. And, Father, we thank you. I just declare in the mighty name of Jesus, open eyes to see, open ears to hear, and, Father, open hearts to receive everything that you have, that, Father, that you would have your way. So, church, just begin to welcome him. Come on. Father, we welcome you. We welcome you, Lord God, that you would come and have your way in our midst. And that, Father, that we could experience you in a whole new, fresh way. That you would receive the praises of our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said, amen and amen. Lily, come on over here, young lady. Aren't they great? So this is actually the second service that, they have to, that they're doing this, right? I mean, you don't have to, right? You're just doing it. She's awesome. Okay. Little sister, she's, you guys are going to go ahead and say that. Go ahead. Outdoor voices. All right. <laughs> Here we go, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Give the Lord a big hand. We welcome you in, yes, Lord. We welcome you in, Lord. Come on, church, he's risen, isn't he? He is risen. He is forever risen. He is forever risen. Jesus Christ, you are the king above every other king. You are the king above every other king. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you adoration, Jesus. Let's just lift our voice to the Lord in our own song. We give you praise. Praise. Oh. Oh, we worship you. 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 Oh, we worship you, Lord. Yeah. We were waiting without hope and without light Till 
from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. reveal to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus, for our sake, you died. Oh, praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, free in one, God of glory. forever to the King of kings. Oh, yes, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Praise forever to the King of kings. Praise forever to the King of kings. Yes, Jesus. And that morning, and the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. The storm was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come, to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born. Then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel's truth of old shall not feel and shall not fade. And by his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, Praise forever to the King. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory. Majesty. Praise forever to the King of kings. Praise forever to the King of kings. Praise forever to the King of kings. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Praise forever 
to the King of Kings. Praise forever to the King of Kings. Praise forever to the King of Kings. It's Jesus. just love you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. And you alone, Jesus. And you alone, our hope is found, Jesus. Yes. We give you praise. Yes. O risen King. We give you praise. O oh, risen King, we give you praise, our risen King, yes, we give you praise, our risen King, <laughs> we give you praise, our risen King. commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. 
just speaking with Pastor Victor and he said from a father to a new father he said my advice would be to feel all of it something that he talks about often is how the Lord felt all of it on the way to the cross father felt all of it as he watched his son go to the cross he felt all of it It says even even as he cried out and they tried to give him sour wine with gall that he wouldn't take it that sour wine was something that was used to numb the pain Jesus wouldn't even numb the pain he felt all of it he felt all of it when he went to the cross for you and for me out of his great love. So let's just sing that. We're just going to sing that. Just the voices and the guitar. How deep. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he would give his only son to me this wretched treasure how great the pain of bearing loss the father turned his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory Jesus 
Jesus paid it all. Oh, to Him I owe. My sin had left a crimson stain. He Jesus died my soul to sin, my lips shall still remain. Jesus paid, and Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it Sing that again, Jesus paid. And Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Sing, he washed. He washed it white as snow. He washed. He washed it white. shout of praise to the Lord. Come on. Give a shout of praise to the Lord. He is the King. He overcame. Come on. Give a shout of praise to your King. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on. Lift your voices to the Lord. Come on. Lift your voices to the Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for the victory that is in Jesus. We thank you for the victory that is in Jesus. We thank you for the resurrection life that is in Jesus. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the cross. 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 Thank you for the cross, Lord.
They wept, the morning sun was dead. The savior of the world was falling. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon it.
thank you. We thank you. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Just the voices forever. Forever he is glorified. Mighty God. Forever he yes, Lord. is lifted high. Forever he is risen. He is alive. Hallelujah. Can we do that one again? Can we do that one again? Let's go ahead. Let's come up to the altar. Those of you that are able, let's come and join together at the altar of God. Let's sing this together to him. Give him glory. Give him honor. You're going to bless him. And it's okay. You've got outdoor voices. You can lift your voices up in this house. Amen. Glory to God. As the worship team just begins with that again, and we're just going to bless the living God. Hallelujah. We love you so much, God. Have your way. Come and rest in the praises of your people. The moon, the stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. Come on, let's sing that the together. The Savior of the world was Jesus. fallen. Hallelujah. His body on the cross. Yes, Lord. His blood poured out for us. Mighty one. The weight of every curse. Come on. Give him glory. Sing one final breath. One final breath he gave. As heaven looked away, the Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in a rain, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever Come on. broken. The ground, yeah. the ground, come on, church, come on, lift him up. The storm was rolled away. Yes, God. His perfect love could not perfect love. be overcome. Mighty God. Now death, where is, where your, is your sting? sting? Our resurrected yes. King Glory. has rendered you defeated. Come on, church. glorified my God King of Kings hallelujah Sing high. 
lift up your hands now your own words begin to bless the living God and thank him for resurrection life thank him for resurrection power God we give you glory we give you glory we give you honor God with bowed hearts oh God with father our hearts knelt before you have your way in us oh God may you be lifted above all other names King of kings, mighty God, we give you all the glory, all the honor. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is Hallelujah. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it anyways. You don't serve an idol that cannot speak. You don't serve a Buddha that cannot speak. You don't serve some other religion, some other denomination that has no power. Many, many gods in the earth, but there is none like the King of Kings. There is none like the King of Kings. He is the only one that his blood was worthy to be shed, to be able to get rid of your sin and wash you white as snow. For you are the King of Kings. There is none above you. Father, there is none. Father, everything, everyone is beneath your name. No other name is greater than the name of Jesus. The God that you serve is a tangible God. Tangible God. And he wants you to know that. He wants you to know that he is experiential. That you can experience the power of the living God for yourself. And as we allow our hearts to be open to him, do you know that that's all that the Father is looking for? There are some of you in here today that the Lord has been wooing you and he's been drawing you unto himself. He's drawing you unto himself, and you feel this, this, this desire to come near the things of God or spiritual things. And here the Father is drawing you unto himself because he wants to show you how real he really is. And God wants to come on the inside of your heart and to begin to show you things you could never see before. But he wants your permission. And so as you allow your hearts to be open to receive what God has, 
everything that he is, you're going to see that God is just waiting there for that. And so, Father, we thank you for a day like today. We thank you that, Father, that we are able, that we're a country, we're still a country, that we can still come together and gather on a Sunday and give you glory. We're still a free country. We can come and bless you. We can come and exalt you. Father, even if that were not the case, we would still bless you. Father, we honor you this morning, and we thank you for Resurrection Sunday. That, Father, that you may receive all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we all said, amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for joining us for service today. I'm Nicole Whitmore, and I have a few highlights happening at the church that I want you to know about. He's no longer in the grave, but he is risen. We're taking a special moment on this Good Friday to remember the price that Christ paid for us. We are having a special evening service at 630 with worship and the word. We would love to worship with you, so please come out. As much as God provides us spiritually, he also promises to take care of us physically. We believe it's important to be good stewards of our homes and communities where God has placed us. Joseph's Company is hosting a community meeting on Saturday and will be discussing communication options in an emergency. We hope you join us this Saturday, April 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. And on the third day, he rose again. What a glorious day we live on this side of the cross. Come and celebrate Easter with us at the 9 or the 11 a.m. service on Sunday, April 9th. Are you ready to have some fun? On Friday, April 21st, we are hosting a family night held here at the church. Bring your favorite game and a dish to pass. It will be at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And this will be a recurrent event the third Friday of every month. We will have two wonderful guest speakers coming to the church on April 23rd. Prophets Roy and Nancy Ralph. They will be here for both services at 9 and 11 a.m. Prophet Roy always comes with a fresh word that blesses the house, so make sure you mark your calendar and save the date. Any house needs a good foundation, and that especially goes for the establishment of our faith. How can we spread the gospel if the gospel is not fully rooted in us? Kingdom Foundations class starts on April 26th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. and will be held on Wednesday evenings. We encourage you to take part in this semester if you are building your faith. For more details and events happening at New Wine, please visit the lobby or our website at newwineministries.net slash calendar. We used to sing a song, Touching Jesus is all that matters, then your life will never be the same. And you know, just being in a building isn't how we touch him. Just because we feel the goosebumps, that's not us touching him. It may be him touching us. Sometimes we ask Jesus into our heart, but he's looking to come into our life. He wants to be a part of our whole life. And when he becomes a part of your life, everything changes. The presence of your life changes. Your understanding of life changes. Everything changes when you know the author of this book, then it's not just reading words on a page, but you know the author. I have a few books in my library that have been written by friends. And when I read them, I read them with a whole different mentality because I know the author. A church that, that we attended for a few years, uh, that pastor, uh, I had known him from when we were teenagers. 
and he's written a few books. And when I read his books, even today, I know the author. Do you know the author? Everything changes when you know the author. There's a knowledge of the author that's down on the inside of you. And this morning I was thinking about generosity, and I, I was thinking how, how generous our king was to give his life, how generous the father was to give his only begotten son. The generosity. Generosity is life-giving. The Lord commanded Israel, and he said, This day I have set before you life and death. And then he gave them a command, didn't he? Choose life. And so we choose what is life-giving. Have you ever been in the room with a Debbie Downer? Negative Nellie. You know, all of the all of the... And it just kind of seems like it brings down everything in the room. Somebody always going to put a, there's one person that always wants to put a shadow over everything. Have you ever been around that? But we as Christians, we are life givers. And so when we walk into the room, the very essence of who we are should bring life into that room. Bring life into that individual. Bring strength into that individual. Someone that's suffering and with sickness and, and suffering with sickness in their home or suffering with sickness, uh, with troubled marriage or, you know, whatever the, the deep, dark valley that they're going through, is your life life-giving? Can you offer them life? The scripture said that Solomon, be generous, invest in acts of charity. Charity yields a high return. When you look at the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians that we often call the love chapter, the, the word that defines that is charity, a giving kind of love. A kind of love that expects nothing in return. A kind of love that gives beyond that expectancy. You know, sometimes it's, it's hard to give to someone that doesn't appreciate it. Have you ever, have you ever given to, to someone that came and asked you for, you know, they, they asked you for 200 bucks and you gave them 200 bucks out of the generosity of their, uh, their heart, and they just did you one over. And then the next time, the next time comes, and you have opportunity, if you're going to share, if you're going to love in the midst of that, if you're going to give in the midst of that. You know, I wonder how many times we just looked over him in all of his generosity to us. And so that do, that's not just so we are convicted, but that's so that we learn how he wants us to be. That he wants us to be generous and life-giving. And so today, on this Resurrection Sunday, the world knows this is Easter Sunday. That's a pagan term. The believer knows this is Resurrection Sunday. Because he lives, I live. Because he lives, I know life. Because he lives, I will forever know life. Forever and ever, like the song said. Forever he is glorified. Because I know him. He is the life. And if he's life, okay, if he's life and he's in me, then the question is, am I in him? Come and dwell in me. Come and dwell in my world. Or let me dwell in your world. Let me dwell in your word. Let me dwell in who you are. And that's what he's desiring of, of us. That's why we do the in him. Because in him, that's how we become those things. And that, that whole in him, 
that Pastor put together came right out of the Word. In him, the uh, Apostle Paul said, in him we live and move and have our being. Not our doing, our being. It's who we are. We are human beings, not human doings. So it's not about all of our works. You have a lot of good works, thank God. But let our lives show forth the essence of his presence. Today we give with generous hearts. Today, Lord, we give with gratitude in our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for what you did for us. We thank you that you rose again from the grave and that because you live, we live. And so today, Lord, in all of our giving, we give of our finances, we give of our time, we give of a spirit of generosity today, and not only today, but in the days ahead, Lord, in the time and season that we are in this, in this land, Lord, we give out of generosity because that generosity has been deposited in us by you. And we give out of generosity. Lord, I ask you to bless as your people give with hearts of gratitude today in the house. And all the people said amen. The ushers are going to serve the house. And we have a video for those of you that would like to give online. Well, all righty then. God is good, amen? I was going to say good morning, but it's still morning, so I've got about six minutes. Good morning, church. So good to be with you this morning. God is good, amen? Happy Resurrection Sunday. God is on the move, right? So we're going to go ahead and get ready to do our declaration. Can we have our declaration up? Let's go ahead and let's stand up one more time. You're going to get your exercise while you're here, amen? But that's okay. Say, God is good. And also say, I don't have to go to Planet Fitness this week. (laughs) All right, so we'll get our exercise at church. Uh, The rest of the week, you can just uh, have a couple of donuts. That's good. Here we go, church. In him, I am a partaker of his divine nature, unified in one spirit. In him, I am an overcomer, called to occupy, influence, transform culture. In him, I have power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal sickness and disease. In him, I am strong and in good courage. In him, I am set over nations and over kingdoms, called to root out and to pull down the strongholds of the enemy. In him, I am called to love, build, and to plant. In him, I shall overtake and recover all. In every place that the foot will tread, he has given to me. In him, I am called to arise and shine, to be radiant, For kings will come to the brightness of my rising, and the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to me. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence in the house. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, because I believe with all my heart that, Father, that we have a people, that, Father, that are hungry for you, that have that desire, open ears to hear, open eyes to see, and, Father, open hearts to receive everything that you have. And Father, I thank you that you would not allow one word to come forth out of these lips that is not of you. And Father, we will continue to lift up the name of your son, Jesus. Father, that you may draw all peoples unto him. And we all said, amen and amen and amen. Did you hear Ali say amen? Amen. Glory to God. God is on the move. God is so good. All right, I'd like to show you how good God is. Can we get a little picture up there of uh, baby Varnhagen, please? Victoria has, well, Victoria and Josh has been busy this weekend, amen? And, uh, and so we have little Eden Joy. She's coming up here really quick. There she is. <sighs> There's little Eden Joy. Isn't she beautiful? She is amazing. So 
she is a Good Friday baby. And so, Good Friday, she's, uh, we just had an absolute uh, beautiful time. Amen. I know that Josh is a little bit tired this, this weekend. I, <laughs> he's feeling pretty good. Um, and, of course, Tammy, yes, give them a big hand. God is so good. And uh, I want to share some of that goodness with you this morning. Amen. Thank you for putting that up. God is, uh, it, it's amazing um, because uh, I, I was going to go a different direction this morning. And of course, the Lord began to change some things for this morning. But the title for this morning is The Blessing, uh, to be able to testify of the goodness of God. And so uh, you're not going to get it quite like the first service got it. It's going to be different, okay? And it's going to be different for a reason. But I believe that. Uh, that God knows every individual in the seat. Amen. I believe that your appointment here this morning, you know, <laughs> we, we have a ten- tendency to think that we'll go to church on Sunday morning, and then all of a sudden God begins to minister something to you that's directly for you. And then what you didn't realize is that God has, has had a divine appointment for you. Amen. And so God does this. He begins to open you up and give you understanding about yourself and, and about what he thinks of you that becomes something that's so real. Amen? I'm going to read to you a portion of Scripture that has to do with, of course, the birth of Jesus and, and his, throughout his whole life. Isaiah 53 that reads, actually just gives you the whole, almost the New Testament in one chapter, so to speak. And I want to be able to touch on some things because I believe the Lord wants to speak to you something that's very specific. Amen? All right, let's go ahead and let's go to Isaiah chapter 53. Before we do that, I, I want to make this announcement. I was supposed to make this uh, in the first, the first um, service, but those of you that are desiring to get into Kingdom Foundations, uh, that starts up, is it next week? Is it this coming Wednesday? The last, the 26th, that's a Wednesday night, right? So we're going to do Kingdom Foundations on Wednesday nights. Um, this is why I wanted to share this with you is because I, I believe that uh, this will help you uh, with your foundations in the sense of understanding who you are in Christ and what God wants to settle on the inside of you. Amen. Uh, your foundation is the most important aspect of who you are as a believer. And, uh, and so we're going to go ahead and try it on a Wednesday night. If you haven't been able to make it on a Wednesday night, maybe you could do it on Wednesday nights for about 10 weeks. This will be one of the most important classes that you ever take in your life, amen? It's important to understand what it is that you're seeking, important to understand what it is that you're experiencing, and that has everything to do with Kingdom Foundations, amen? So that'll be available for you here at the end of the month, Wednesday nights. Let's go ahead and take a look at Isaiah 53. Look over to your neighbor before we do that and say, God made you beautiful. Go ahead and tell him. God made you beautiful. God is so good. Yes, you are. I was telling those in the service before us, I says that might be the only compliment you get all week. You better take it. You look beautiful too. Verse 1, here we go, church. Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a dry root out, out of the ground, as a dry root Let me say that again. And as a root out of dry ground, he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. I just want to stop there for just a moment, even uh, I want to stop at verse 4. And uh, as I was going through this week, and and of course as Victoria uh, was giving birth to little little Eden, um, the Lord just began to do some things on the inside of me. You know... I'm going to tell you something personal, okay? It's different than uh, the first service, but I need to tell you something personal uh, that has to do with my own personal life because God just began to kind of just unfold even more so the goodness of God, like his goodness. 
Many of you don't understand or even know where we have come from or I have come from or have heard my particular story, but um, what you see today hasn't always been. Amen? Um, You see the goodness of God in our lives. You see what has happened in the past maybe 10 years. If you've been with us for 12 years or 24 years, you've seen God just unfold some very powerful things about who our lives really are. And it wasn't always like that. There was a lot of different things that was happening in my particular life that God began to change. And God began to come into our lives and began to show us the reality of who he is. And uh, it, was, it was genuinely a powerful aspect of God taking an individual in pure darkness, a family in pure darkness, and bringing them into his marvelous light. Okay? Now, I want to give you this understanding because... There are things that Jesus had encountered, things that he had endured in his humanity that I don't think that we pay a whole lot of attention to. Even as a child, I want you to begin to see a child that was, in essence, it says that he, he was one that would experience sorrow, he would experience grief, he would experience anxiety. I think that we have to allow ourselves to uh, understand that Jesus experienced every aspect of life, even every emotion. That we experience. I don't know if you can go back that far, but remember when you were just a a young girl, a young boy, okay? Some of you have to go way back. (laughs) Some of you just got to go back just a little ways. Um, But it's interesting because uh, something happens in every childhood. It seems like I can go back to mine and I can remember traumatic things that would happen. And one of the traumatic things that began to happen in my life was when my grandfather died. And then later on in life, of course, when my dad was murdered. And traumatic events happen in such a way that they shift and they change who you are if they're never dealt with. And I think about what Jesus had to endure as a young boy, so much so that, that even his own people in the town of Nazareth never even really uh, received him because they still saw him according to his old glory. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that they saw him kind of nerdy, so to speak. He wasn't popular. He wasn't one of those young boys or teenage boys that everybody wanted to hang out with. Uh, he was just one of those ones that was just kind of tucked by the side and even I believe he was even bullied, if you want to go that far to a certain extent, just because of him experiencing sorrow, experiencing grief, and even anxieties as a young boy. And I think that many times we take a look at the life of Jesus and we only see him from 30 years old to 33 years old, but we don't understand that he had a a lifetime of things that he felt, just like you and I feel. The temptations that you go through, he had to go through himself, but they never overcame him. It says that that there was no sin or there was no temptation that became a part of his life, that he had to die to every temptation the same way that he asked us to die, okay? Uh, I'm sharing this with you for a reason. So Joshua began to explain to you or share some things with you, um, uh, kind of uh, a part of a message that I had put together that had to do with the Lord confronting me based on what I allow myself to feel and what do I allow myself not to feel, okay? Because even as a young boy, as a young child, you learn to be able to turn some of these things off so that you don't feel them, okay? And it was, it's just the most powerful thing uh, that God began to reveal some things to me because in my life, I became pretty good at shutting off certain feeling. In fact, I think guys are, are, are probably a lot better at it than women are, than girls are. And there were different traumatic things that would happen in our life uh, before we came to the Lord that, that were just staggering to where you began to just kind of flip the switch. Say, I don't want to feel that no more. And, and flipping the switch to not feel that anymore might be, well, I'm not going to allow myself to get in that kind of situation again. Or it might mean I'm not going to allow myself to feel that kind of compassion anymore. Or it could be that you're not going to allow yourself to trust anyone anymore. And so you begin to shut switch off after switch and after switch to where these, these feelings of compassion, these feelings of, of whatever it might be, um, 
you just gotten pretty good at not feeling. And, and so that happened to me, even as a Christian, like God began to do this work on the inside of me. I'm, I'm expressing some of the goodness of God to you because I believe that this affects you as well too. But God began to show me, even as a believer, that he came into my life, transformed my life, and, and began to shift me and change me. But then there were different situations and circumstances that would come up that would remind me of that traumatic event. And I would say, no, I don't want to go there. I don't want to cry. I don't want to weep like that. Have you ever wept to where you just your body hurt because you wept in anguish or you wept in such pain? Why would you ever want to go there again? And so there were some times that was happening here through the transition of my daughters getting married. Now, they both got married in one year. Okay? So... I noticed this about myself, even though God had been so good to me throughout the years, I began to see that as my two daughters, I was giving away two daughters, Judy, two daughters in one year. And I told them before they got married or before they started, you know, wanting to get married, like, don't do this to me all in one year. (laughs) And they did. But... um. So this whole thing was a God thing. Like, I have two beautiful young men in our lives, just uh, two sons that I, I, couldn't have, I couldn't have picked them any better. God did an amazing job there. But as close as my daughters were to me, okay, my daughters, when they were born, they changed my life. Like, they began, I just fell in love with these three little beings. And when you talk about a, a father, uh, you know, being wrapped around his daughter's pinky, that was me. It took me a while to even just bring, like, a strong correction to my daughter because they're so cute. <laughs> and, um, but it's amazing because God began to take this, this hard person, even though he had already done a, a, and started this work in me, he began to take this hard person that thought that he was the coolest thing in the world and he began to, to show him these little, these little beings that would just grab his heart and change him even more. Take the hardness of a man or a, a very prideful individual that uh, didn't want to seem like, you know, you could get to me in any way. But those little young girls, they seemed to get to me. So much so that, you know, if, if we took them to the store and they'd say, Dad, do you think this is cute? And I'd say, oh, that looks cute. And I couldn't believe that those words were coming out of my mouth, that I could say, that's cute, because those kind of words don't come out of a cool guy, right? They, they just don't talk like that. And, uh, but it's amazing how that, how that the young girls would begin to shift and change your life and change your life and in many different ways. Why am I sharing this with you? Because I, I was good in those days to hide my feelings Didn't want to cry in front of nobody. Men didn't cry, right, Pastor Calvin? Men don't cry. And, uh, but my relationship with my girls just began to just grow, and it was a beautiful, powerful thing. And then here comes the age where I have to give them away to two men that now they're supposed to take care of my daughters the way that I took care of them. And they're supposed to love them the way that I love them. They're supposed to give them everything that they need, everything that they want. And in the middle of, of, of them getting married, there was something that was happening to me. There's, there's, there's a reason why I'm sharing this with you. There was something that, that happened to me. And a part of this was that I, I felt like, you know what, I'm not going to show that side of me. I'm not going to show that soft part of me. I'm just, we're just going to go ahead and get through this thing and uh, get them married and get them into their houses and all that wonderful stuff. And, and, uh, and God began to do something on the inside of me because he knew that I was stuffing feelings down. He knew that as a man uh, getting ready to give his daughters away, I was, I was putting many of those feelings aside. And the Lord questioned me. And he said, why are you doing that? And when I, when I heard him say, why are you doing this? 
And I said, I mean, I knew why I was doing it. But, you know, when you get challenged by the Lord, it, you have to just for a moment, don't answer. Okay, don't answer. Just, just sit and ponder like what he's really asking you. Okay, because you'll say something foolish. And he says, why are you doing that? Why are you holding back your feelings? Why are you holding back that part of you? And he said this to me. He says, when my son went to the cross, he didn't hold back one feeling. When he was growing up as a tender plant before me, he wanted to feel every anxiety. He wanted to feel every hurt. He chose to, as the Lord, he chose to feel every pain. When he was on his way to Jerusalem, the triumphant entry, he knew what he was going them for, therefore, he did, it did not catch him by surprise. He understood the gravity of what he was born for. He understood that he would encounter the hatred. He understood that he would encounter every betrayal. Now, I don't know what you would feel like that if you trusted or if you discipled 12 men for three years, lived with them, broke bread with them, laughed with them, cried with them, and then one of them, of course, would betray you to the enemy, not to mention the other ones would deny you. So he wanted to feel every denial. He wanted to feel every betrayal. And so the Lord began to bring this up before me. And he said, my son wanted to feel everything on his way to the cross. And he said, why won't you feel this? Church, listen to me. There are many things that happen to us as individuals through our lifespan. And is what happens is that we take those things and we begin to shut down. And sometimes it's, it's not that we're doing it on purpose, but there's safety mechanisms that we begin to switch on the inside of us so that we can shut these things down so that no one will ever hurt us again. Or so that we will not feel that kind of pain or that kind of embarrassment or that kind of you fill in the blank. And it's amazing because what Jesus had gone through even as a child, now I, I don't want you to just only see it as he w when he went to the cross, but even all the way through his life, it said that it pleased the Father God in heaven to bruise him. Now that sounds a little bit disturbing, but it, you, have to, you have to allow yourself to not see it that way because it wasn't that it pleased the Father to hurt him. It pleased him to see the overcoming of what Jesus was doing. It pleased him to see that he was, in, that he was experiencing these hurts uh, to be able to carry these things on his shoulder because he took Lena's sin to the cross. He took my sin to the cross. He took your iniquities to the cross. He carried all of it, and it wasn't that he just carried it. He felt it. Joshua, well, Joshua was expressing how that when he was on the cross, they could have given him some, some, some old wine and some, some gall to numb the senses. Now listen to me. This is powerful to me. He chose not to drink it because he needed and wanted to feel every stripe. He needed and wanted to feel every pulling of his beard. He wanted and needed to feel every scratch, every bruise, every cut. He chose to feel it all and to keep yet his mouth closed. As God, he could have shut it all off, but he didn't. Everything that we would feel, the scourgings, the beatings, the denials, the betrayal, he felt every essence of it. He didn't shut it off. He didn't tuck it away. He didn't stuff it down. And he began to tell me, he says, I want you to feel it. 
I want you to feel, in essence, what's happening in the moment. I want you to feel why you're releasing two daughters to two new sons. I want you to feel that on the inside of you. You see, God gave us emotions to feel. But what the world and the culture has done, and they've done a pretty good job of it, is that we have become uh, dumb. Our feelings have become uh, hurt and broken in such a way that we don't want to feel. Not like that. And what that does for our humanity is something that God wants to come into your life and just begin to heal. Because when you go through life as a feelingless individual, uh, God doesn't want you to be robotic. You can live life being robotic, okay? But Jesus came for more than just to save your soul. He came for more than to bring you into a place of eternal life. The Word says this, that He came to save you, spirit, soul, and body. And as what happens, even when you come to the Lord, if you don't allow those, those places within you to be healed, you can't really enjoy the life that he's given you to enjoy. There's an abundant life that he wants you to experience. There's an abundant life that he wants you to, to feel and to see. Not all of it, no, not all of it's going to feel good, but in the midst of the valley, he's going to bring you through it. And he's going to allow you to feel the overcoming as well as that valley. He never meant for that valley to destroy you. He never meant for that traumatic thing to, to shut you down in a way that you would never allow yourself to trust him. You see, is what happens is that when these things happen to us in such a way, they shut us down. And even your expectations become, well, I'm not going to believe God for that because I might just get my expectations a place to not, you know, like it's hope deferred. Like I'm not going to hope in that because that's probably not going to happen. I'm not going to hope in that because that's probably not going to happen. And, uh, and as God was convicting me, I began to say to the Lord, I says, Lord, help me to feel in every area that I live. Every area. And I'm sharing this with you this morning because I believe that the Lord wants to heal this part of, of your life, these parts of your life. This is a part of resurrection life that God wants to, to bring forth and, and bring healing in. Because without that component healed on the inside of you, that emotional component, because we're, we're a three-part being, we're a spirit, soul, and body, but within the soul is your intellect and your emotions, okay? God never intended for your emotions to drive you. He never intended for that, but he made you an emotional being as well. He wanted you to feel because he feels. Amen? And so as what happens with that is that God allows us to experience resurrection life, not just for salvation, but also for the healing of the soul. And church, listen to me. There are some of you in here that, that your hope has been broken. Your hope has been broken and it's hard for you to hope anymore because you've hoped for so long. And the Lord wants to show you another facet, another dimension of hope that will strengthen you and empower you to believe. Does that make sense? I feel in my spirit that... Uh, that there are, are, are those of you that are here or those that are watching online, that the soul part of who we are has been broken in so many different ways, shattered and even torn apart that you didn't think that God could even put that together. And uh, I'm here to tell you that he can. He can put it together. The reason being is because God wants you whole. He wants you whole. And if we continue to live as, as individuals, as men, as women, that, that are continually trying to hide our feelings, trying to suppress some of these emotions, that it will be hard for us to function and to really be who we 
and who God has called us to be. Amen? So there's resurrection life and resurrection power that's available for this part of your body, this part of who you are as an individual. I began to see that God uh, wanted to heal not just like the parts that, that seem visible, but the parts that are invisible because you've hid them for so long, because I've hid them for so long. And so I'm able to be transparent to you because my victory will be your glory. Um, because as the Lord continues to take me through journeys that I'm being healed in or just overcoming, it becomes something like, like there's got to be more than me that goes through these kinds of things, right? And so we begin to see that, okay, God, I want to feel all things. I want to see. I mean, certainly, I don't have to go to the cross anymore like Jesus did. I'm thankful that none of us has to experience the cross. Amen? None of us have to experience that whole journey. I don't have to carry everyone's sin. I don't have to feel what he felt. But he does want us to feel the life that we live. He does. Because in that, for whatever reason, whatever things we go through, there is not one thing that we go through that God cannot turn for your good. There is not one thing. And once you begin to heal in it and go through it, you become victory for somebody else to receive. You become a strength for somebody else. In essence, uh, I'd like to say it like this. You even become a pioneer for somebody to come behind your trail because you have seen healing and because you have seen the overcoming power of God. Now you can help others feel the healing, walk them through so that they can experience the overcoming nature of God. I could go through and, and tell you about so many different circumstances about childhood that some of you are still dealing with traumatically, that keep you from feeling today, keep you from experiencing the genuineness of God because you won't release that part of your heart to Him. This is the reality of who God is. And so He's sharing this with you this morning because I believe that there's resurrection power on this Sunday morning for you. Amen? If I could have the worship team back up, please. I began to experience even in a whole new dimension with little Eden on, on her way. Began to experience like, what are these feelings that I'm feeling? People keep calling me grandpa now. It's disturbing, but it's like it's, it's good. It's like it's fun, you know. It's, it's like it's okay kind of thing, you know. And, and uh, I was trying to, you know, I have this secret. Um, uh, you know, people think that I dye my hair. I do not dye my hair, okay. I just put a lot of gel in it so that no one can see the gray hairs. Um, but here, this grandfather thing, like there's a good ring to it. There's a good ring to this grandfather thing, right? Yeah. Are you going to be called grand Grandpa, Papa? If you listen to Josh, he'll say pee pee, and I'm like, no, let's not do that one. <laughs> but God, He was showing us these blessings. And uh, I believe that God just wants to touch you this morning. I want to share with you that God has this, this healing strength about who he is. That if you'll let him, if you'll acknowledge these areas in your life, God will begin to heal them. I promise you that. It's something that's, that's needful. Amen? Jerry, can you give me that water, please?
Psalms 27. Thank you. Verse 13 and 14 says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It goes on to say, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And so what God does on a day like Resurrection Sunday is that he'll give you just a tidbit. You thought that maybe you'd hear about the life of Christ, and you did, I mean, in in small capsule form. But actually, God wants to heal your soul. He wants you to be able to feel once again because there are going to be people that he's going to bring to you that that you're going to be able to feel that same compassion for them because they're broken people. You see, the, the way that the Lord begins to minister to people that are broken or have broken souls is that he'll show you one that's been broken and that has been healed. And then you begin to see Maybe I can be healed too. That gives you hope. Amen? I will tell you this. This has been a a long journey for myself as a man, as a young man, to be able to see that God was was shaping my soul and, and, and mending it, bringing it together, allowing my soul to feel once again and to feel in a way that there's healing. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I haven't been a broken person all my life. That's not the case. The, the thing is, is that God continues to heal. You're not just all healed when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Okay, God begins to allow you to take this journey, and then this circumstance happens over here that highlights this broken place on the inside of you, or this circumstance happens over here, or you hear this message that begins to trigger something on the inside of you that says, that's a sore spot. And the Lord says, today you can get rid of that. Allow me to heal it. Allow me to strengthen it. Because if that is not worked on, if that is not healed, then how can I use you in these other areas that I have for you? Make sense? Church, let's go ahead and let's stand. The Father desires his goodness for you. And so I'm just going to be bold. Can I be bold? Say, say, Pastor, go ahead and be bold this morning. Thank you. Now that I have your permission, I'm going to be bold. That if that's you, if that's where your heart is this morning, if if there's just a, a healing that needs to happen on the inside of you because God wants to touch you, he wants to heal some, some open wounds that are there, I'm just going to ask you, I'm going to be bold and I'm going to ask you, come on up to the altar so that we can pray for you, so that we can agree with you. And God is going to begin to heal you on the inside. Amen? So just allow yourself to come to the altar. I'm going to have my ministers just come behind you. Yabaris. Now I'm going to ask for them to sing the blessing over you. And our ministers are just going to go and they're just going to touch you on your back. You're just going to feel the healing power of God to begin to heal your soul. Touch you on the inside. But you have to release that, God. You you have to allow yourself to say, God, I give this to you. Father, begin to heal my soul, the inner depths of my being. So as they sing, ministers, go ahead and begin. God. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Just got to release that. Just go ahead and lift your hands. All right. Just let God touch that right there. Say, God, I give you that. I give you the open wound. Yes, God. Even now. Release. Release. In Jesus' mighty name. Divine strength, divine mending, divine healing, come forth right now. Touch your body, touch your soul. No longer, no longer to hold her in bondage. No longer to hold her in the hidden place. But God, you have brought her forth, Lord God, in this hour and in this time to be everything that you have called her to be. And so, God, we release her, Father, from that place. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Every place, God. Every place. Divine healing. Hallelujah. Not just a suture, but Father, a complete healing. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Healing every emotion. God, not driven by her emotions, but in control of them. In Jesus' name, divine strength, divine healing. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Say, Father, I just receive it. I receive your divine hand of strength. Sing it, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May his yes, be upon you and a thousand Jesus. generations and your family divine and your strength. children and your children divine healing. and your children. Follow your divine plan to come go forth. before you and behind yes, God. you and beside you every all world. around you and within every you. Moon, he is every with open you. Moon. He is with you in, in Jesus the morning. Name. Yes, God. He is for you. He is for you. He is for yes, you. He is for you. He is for you. Healed in every area. No longer putting the feelings away, but saying, here it is, God. Do with it as you desire. 
do with it as you please. Heal every scar. yourself take a deep breath through your nose just, just take a deep breath can you hear me just allow yourself take a deep breath through your nose and breathe it out your mouth father we release in jesus name one more time blow it out yes god father every hindrance every roadblock release in jesus name Father, we call her forth unto your divine plan, unto your purpose. Father, that she may fulfill everything that you have for her. And may nothing hold her back ever again. Jesus is Lord. Your flowers, shine a rose. And your family, and your children, and your children, yes, and your Lord. children. May his presence go before you, Hallelujah. and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you, He is Hallelujah. with you, He is with you, Can I pray for even you too? more than, Can I pray for even you too? even okay? in your coming, and Husband, your going, wife. and your weeping, and rejoicing, Adam, He is for Marissa. you, okay, well, I just want to take your hand, I want you to put he your hand on your wife. You. Father, we thank you for this marriage. There's such divine purpose in this marriage. There's, there's such a plan here, but the enemy has tried to destroy it. I don't know in what form or what shape, but the enemy is doing his best, and he continues to do his best. And en enemy, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. We come against you, enemy. And Father, even though you may influence the flesh of man, we come against you. And Father, this, this, this marriage is before the Lord. The Lord sees this marriage. He sees this marriage and he has pushed away even the things that have has tried to come in. There's just been where, where there was a deserving of judgment for whatever reason. I don't know. The Lord says, no, my mercy is upon them. My mercy is upon them. My mercy is upon them. So, Father, we just thank you for divine mercy. And we call forth this marriage unto your divine destiny, unto your purpose, Lord God. And, Father, where the enemy has tried to destroy, once again, we bind you up. Even the words that have come against this marriage and the destruction and just things, I don't even know what it is. I just felt it in the spirit. But, Father, we speak life. And we speak, Father, a divine peace. And, Father, this man to come into his place that you have for him. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. There's a gifting in you, brother. There's a gifting that God has put in you, and the enemy has tried to twist it. The enemy has tried to distort. And the Lord says, Son, hear my word. Hear my word for you. Come forward to my plan for your life. My plan for your life can only be discerned when you come to me with all of your heart. And so, Father, we just call them forth. The plans and purposes of God come forth in Jesus' mighty name. Did you receive that? Bless him. Bless God. Yes. 
Almighty God. He is the King of all kings. Father, we thank you because you, you are the only one that can bring healing to the depths of the soul. Father, our medical people can only do so much, but Father, you can heal the depths of who we are. And so, Father, we thank you, Father, for touching the hearts of your people. For those that have stepped up, Lord God, in faith, we know that you're bringing healing to their very soul. And God, that divine purpose may continue to unfold for them. So, Father, we just acknowledge the healing. Just go ahead and say, Father, I thank you for touching the depths of my soul. Hallelujah. We give you glory and honor and praise. We all said amen. Go ahead and let's go back to your seats. Let's take communion together before we leave. The communion cup should, right, should be right in front of you. In front of you, the seat's in front of you. Let's go ahead and prepare our hearts for communion. Hallelujah. We're going to stand when we do this, by the way. I told you you'd get your exercise here at New Wine. Let us break, brother, break bread together. Father, we thank you. God is good, church. Thank you, Jesus. are you let's go ahead and lift the bread father we honor you and father we thank you that you have given your son father you have given your son father he was the only sacrifice that was pure enough that was worthy enough and father we thank you that you gave him lord god to carry our iniquities to carry our sin nature. Father, every blemish, Lord God, he didn't only take it to the cross, but he felt every single one. And Father, never once did he heed to a temptation, but Father, he overcame every single one. And Father, we thank you for the body of our Lord. We remember on such a time, such a day as this, that, Father, that he did not stay in the grave, but he arose, Father, resurrection power. So, Father, once again, we thank you. Go ahead and break the bread. We bless you, Father. We thank you for the body of our Lord. Take and eat. Hallelujah. Lift the cup. Say this with me, God, you're so good. You have a plan and a purpose for our lives. And Father, we receive it. Father, I thank you for these that are listening, these that are partaking. And Father, we remember the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed. And Father, every drop that was shed. Father, we thank you for touching our hearts. We thank you for making us righteous, Lord God. We thank you for releasing your grace that we may partake of abundant life. In Jesus' mighty name, take and drink. Hallelujah. dismiss you um, one of the things that we had discussed or talked about in the earlier service was the fact that that God has such a plan for your life and at times when these areas in our soul are not healed we won't even give God a chance so what God does is that he shows you his goodness is that he'll, he'll allow you to know that he sees that and he 
he says, I'll heal that for you if you'll give it to me. And as you give it to him, God heals the inside and he touches your heart and he says, now come unto your divine purpose that I have for you. I have a plan for you. I have a plan for your family. I want to break the generational curses that have been upon your family so that the next generation that comes forth from you will live a, a righteous and holy life and my blessing will be upon them. That's what God wants to do. He wants to bless your generations. And so, Father, as you, your people go today, if they would go knowing that, Father, that you desire to bless them, that they would walk in the earth as a blessed people, a blessed generation, and, Father, even for the future generations in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. The worship team is going to continue to sing. Can you sing the blessing, please? Just uh, sing that over the people, and as you are dismissed, um, just have a wonderful time with family today. God bless you, church. We love you.